So first of all, take a look at this curve. This is the curve that's on your paper. So suppose we want to take this region, this region bounded by 2x squared minus x cubed about the y-axis. Why is this hard? So I wouldn't make you graph something like that by hand probably, but it's not very hard to believe that the intersection points are where they are. Do you buy that? Because if you take this expression and you factor it, you end up with x squared times 2 minus x, right? Do you always buy that there's an intersection point at 0 and there's an intersection point at 2, right? Okay. So if you're going to take this thing and you're going to spin it about the y-axis, you have to slice horizontally, right? And which means you have a solve with a hole in it, right? So you have to find r out and r in, right? Which probably kind of means you've got to find like this like maximum point and then you've got to like take this equation if you're going to find things that are sideways, you're going to have to do what with it? You must solve for uh, and that's the problem, right? As in like, oh my gosh, I can't solve this for x. And this is specific for, so for rotation about the y-axis, that's hard. Could you rotate this about the x-axis? Yeah, and it wouldn't be hard, right? And the answer is yes. You would just use, for the radius, the expression itself. But is that the same solid? No. This, if you were talking about the x-axis, you're not going to have any holes. It's going to be kind of like weird bulbous, sort of like Christmas bulb-shaped thing. About the y-axis, kind of like this goofy trough thing. Do you buy that? Okay, so the question is, how the heck do you deal with this going around the y-axis? And the idea that you can do this with the x-axis easily is actually kind of cool. So what you do instead is you slice the, this way, and you still spin about the y-axis. So if you spin those things, so if you spin a slice <coughs> around y, what is the shape? It's going to be, a, I like the tube, it's going to be a cylinder. Is it a solid cylinder? It's going to be a hollow cylinder, right? Probably an O there, right? Hollow. So you're going to have lots of little, so like Coke cans without their tops on them, right? Little cylinders inside of each other. That's what the next picture shows you. So here's that, a similar region, okay? Spin region around the y-axis, do you believe that this is the kind of solid that comes out? You buy that? Okay. So what we're going to do, instead of slicing perpendicular to the axis of rotation, we're going to slice parallel to it, like this. So what is the picture that's in yellow trying to show you? It's going to try to show you like this thing when you spin all of the chunks, right? Before you've taken the number of chunks to infinity. And do you see that you have like cylinders inside of cylinders? And that's the idea behind cylindrical shells. So the volume is going to be about equal to a sum of all these cylinders. So instead of adding up disks, you're adding up cylinders, hollow ones specifically. So here, so the question is, is what is the formula for a cylinder? You guys know the formula for a cylinder's volume if it's a whole cylinder, right? Yeah, okay. So here is a picture of a hollow cylinder. So your book does this really, really formally and explicitly, but I think it's good enough to just do it the way that Professor Fod did in her notes. It's actually much easier. So take this thing. She said, take your scissors and cut it. You get to cut it in your head because you can't actually cut it. But if you cut it and then you lie it flat, do you buy that you get a very thin rectangle? Approximately because there is a little bit of curvature to it. But if you've made a really, really, really small slice, it's going to be about a rectangle, right? Okay. So what is the volume of a rectangle? Or a volume, not a rectangle, sorry, I said it wrong. Volume of a, um, a box. 
sort of psi times psi times psi. In this case, <coughs> length with height, right? Because we don't know they're all the same. Okay, so this is my length, my width, and this is my height. Mm -hmm. Yep, the width is going to be the width is going to be delta x. Yep, we got that. Okay, um, the height. Yeah. Wouldn't it be more like a like a trapezoidal prism because the inside, oh uh, the inside yeah 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 it's not going to be it's not going to be exactly a rectangle, but we're approximating it anyway. And if you make a small enough slice, it's going to be really really close to being a rectangle, you know, a right solid. So the point is is not that it's exactly one, but it's going to be quite close to one. But you're right, it won't be exactly one because of the whole curvature business. Okay, now, if this was coming from a curve, do you agree that the height is just gonna be the curve itself? Does that make sense? How tall your slices are depends on where you made your slice, right? And that is this distance. That's why the height is f of x. Now, how about the length? How does this length relate to the slice that it was. It's, it's this, does that make sense? The length is like the circumference. That's a great question. What you can prove and what your book proves is that instead of looking at the radius, you can look at the average of the radii and that gives the volume exactly. So you have the length is equal to two pi, what they call r, where r is the average radius. Okay, so your volume is 2 pi r times your function f of x times your delta x. That's for a little slice. How does this r, how does it relate to the original picture? So if you have this curve, y equals f of x. r is how far away you are. Does that make sense? before you make that slice. If you made your slice close to the edge, that's a different R, right? Versus far away is a bigger R. So this R is actually just gonna equal whatever X value you have. Because then how far away was that slice? So the volumes you're adding up are two pi X, F of X dx, or delta X. That was not what I meant to do. So volume of a slice is going to be 2 pi. We'll just call it x sub i because it's a different x for different ones. The height at that point times delta x. Say that again. Uh, that's a typo. Yep. And the best way to think about that is the way to find a volume of a hollow, cil hollow cylinder is circumference, height, times thickness. Can you see how all those things are coming in there? Okay. And that's just one slice. How do you guess? Um, if you think about the, R, the delta x being the average radius, can't you... Uh, <clears throat> derive that to being pi delta x squared f of x because if it if it's no, no. it isn't delta x isn't the delta x is crap delta x is not the average radius that's not the thing that was the average radius it's the it's the x sub i that was the average radius height, thickness. Yeah, so no, I think you're mixing up the things that are the averages, but the average radius 
comes up in this thing. That's where it comes up. Delta X just tells you how thick the slice was that you made. Okay. So yeah, you can, what you do to sort of prove that formula is you take this thing and you find the volume of the outer cylinder minus the inner cylinder, where the outer radius is R2 and the inner radius is R1. And then you can use that to show that, oh, well, you can just use the average of those two radii, which you could relate to delta x. That's how you kind of prove it. It ends up being a little bit tricky. Okay, but the general thing to think about is you take circumference, height, thickness. That's the general formula. That's what the next thing says. So the way to find this solid is to find the integral from wherever your slices begin to where they end, 2 pi times your radius, that's the circumference part, height, this is the height, and then the dx thing comes from delta x and that's the thickness. And the way to think about these, think about r of x is how far away from the axis of rotation is the slice you make. So how far from axis of rotation to the slice, and h of x is how tall is the slice. Well, you can. Okay. So, and it depends, because if you have two curves, then it isn't just f of x anymore. Does oh. that make sense? Yeah, so in general, when you make a slice with the first example that we had that was just a you know, curve like this from A to B, then you can say 2 pi, if you're spinning about the y-axis, how far is it to your slice? You can even just say that r of x is equal to x and how far over are you? Well, your x unit's over. And then you can say, in this case, that h of x is equal to f of x. Okay. So that's for the specific case where you have only one curve and it isn't shifted around a weird axis. Does that make sense? Because when things are just shifted around weird axes, like if my axis was over here, my radius is going to change. That's the thing. That's why this formula is kind of nice because it's really general. It applies to all sorts of stuff. Does that make sense as opposed to the one that, second one that I gave only applies to this curve, x, x, y axis only? So let's do an example, okay? Let's do one. So we have sine of x squared from 0 to root pi. I don't expect you to know what sine of x squared's graph looks like, but it crosses this axis at root pi. And it does some kind of thing like this. This is a question from your textbook, and they give you the picture for this question. Okay. And you're going to spin about this axis. And we are in the cylindrical shells section, but I think you're going to know both methods. You can actually choose which one you want to apply. So do you want to slice this way? Or do you want to slice that way? The one that's that way. OK. So we're going to apply It's called the shell method, this thing we just learned. OK. So the volume is 2 pi integral a to b radius times height dx. OK, so the radius is easy. How far is it from your axis of rotation out to your slice? X. X. It varies, but it's just X. How tall are your slices? Just sine of X squared. And the two pi, the reason it's two pi on this one is because you have circumference. Circumference of a circle is two pi r, right? as opposed to the previous one where it was the area of a circle, which is pi r squared, right? 
Okay, so our volume is going to be 2 pi integral. What are my bounds? 0 to root pi. And I have x times sine of x squared. Is this something that you can actually integrate? Yes. Yeah, what do you, what method do you have to use? Use a, use a u. What should your u be? X squared. X squared, yep. So then du is 2x dx, or half du equals x dx. So it just becomes sine of u. You should change the bounds, yep. So if x is 0, u is 0 squared, which is? Mm -hmm. And if x is root pi, root pi squared makes pi. And the 1 half and the 2 cancel. What's the antiderivative of sine? I think it might be negative. I drop my pi. Did I drop it on the floor? Uh -huh. In that case, my dogs would get it. Hey, that'd be sad for me, good for them. Negative pi times, what is cosine of pi? Negative one. And then minus negative pi times one. So I think that's gonna be two pi in the end, isn't it? So here is the general pattern, and I think this probably is useful to keep in mind. If you do the disk method, you slice perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Do you see what I mean by that? Okay. If you do the shell method, you slice how relative to your axis of rotation? Parallel. Parallel to the axis of rotation. One of, I'm pretty sure one of the take home quiz questions has a bunch of, has a region that says set up the integral using both methods. Because I used to let people pick and do whatever they wanted and have preferences, but I think it's much better for me to make you learn them both. Yes? No, no, we're only going to rotate about horizontal and vertical lines only. We're not going to rotate around like diagonals or things like weirdness. No, 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 no. Okay, no. But that problem you just did would be messy doing the other method. Yes, that previous problem I did would be like messy, if not impossible, going the other way. So the one that I gave you on the quiz is something like a parabola where you can definitely do it both ways. I had to pick something very special so that it would work both ways, because it is always the case that that is not always true. Yeah, good point. Okay, so let's take the region y equals 3 plus 2x minus x squared, and x plus y equals 3, and we're going to rotate that around the y-axis. I'm sorry I didn't give you a grid. Did I give you a grid? No, I did not. Bad, bad Beth. Okay, first of all, solve this one for y. So y equals... 3 minus x. That one's going to be easy enough to deal with. The next one, I know you love to complete the squares. So let's do it. Nobody made a groaning, sarcastic <laughs> sound. So take out the negative. Okay. So what number do you add inside those parentheses? Mm-hmm. Yep, half of the negative 2 squared. <coughs> and then what number have you effectively actually added? Negative. negative once you've got to add one outside to compensate. You guys should be mathematically mature enough by now you can actually understand this method. Unlike in algebra 1 when you first saw it. So 
Okay, so 3 minus x begins at 3, has a slope of negative 1, right? Okay, it's going to go something like that. And you can see that I give you grids for myself as much as I give them to you for you. Where is this parabola going to have its vertex? Or is the parabola shifted over to the right and up? And it's upside down, right? So I think it's going to be up there at 1, 4. Then it will cross here. And I think it also crosses there. Okay. Right. Um, which axis are we spinning around? The y. <laughs> If we had spun about the x, would we need this new fancy method? No. no. So we're spinning about the y. Slicing horizontally is a pain because it's not so bad until you get to this point and you've got to find a different r out and r in because you have like an r out on the purple curve and an r in on the purple curve. It's just going to be gross. Everyone who tries fails. Okay, so don't try to use that method. Is it because it's too difficult or because it's impossible? It's because it's too difficult, and they don't recognize that the um, shell method is the one that works, and so it's the type of student that has that problem is the type of student that would make small mistakes on the way as well. But it's mostly that they, can, they can't handle the complicated setup. I could probably do it, but it's going to be so much uglier. Okay. So that spins around. So let's have the formula that is the volume is 2 pi integral a to b radius times height times thickness. So first of all, what are the bounds? Zero to three, yep. The radius, how far away from the axis of rotation is your slice? Just x. And then how tall is a slice? The difference between them, yeah, so top curve, which is 3 plus 2x minus x squared minus the bottom curve. So that's 2 pi integral 0 to 3 x times, when you simplify the stuff inside of those parentheses, what do you get? Well, the threes go away, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, 3x minus x squared. And from there, it's not so bad to integrate, right? Just distribute. 3x squared minus x cubed. What's the antiderivative of 3x squared? Mm -hmm. Minus a quarter x to the fourth, right? And you do that, and you end up with 27 pi over 2. Often, when you do, like I used to think, most people learn the disk method first, and the shell method second. So you're implicitly a bit biased against it, like, oh my gosh, it's weird, it's different, I don't like it very much. But it turns out, you give it a chance, the integrals that you end up with having to actually compute often end up being easier, especially when you have axes of rotation that are weird. Yeah? How would you find the height again? Um, the height is how tall this is. So it's the top curve minus the bottom curve, because the top curve measures how far off of the x-axis the purple curve is take away this distance. Yep. So it will always be top curve minus bottom curve, even if they're below the x-axis. Yeah? What would be a scenario where this would be like more complicated than doing this method? If I had asked you to take this same region and rotate it around the x-axis. Do you guys see the answer to this question? The question was, when is the disk method better? Right, effectively right. When would disk be better than shell? And if you had to spin about the x-axis 
to do shell, you'd have to slice horizontally, which would have the same problem as the slicing when you spun around the Y. Yep, so just draw a shell in and say, can I find, if it's the radius, that can I find this expression easily or can I find that expression easily? And I always have to draw in what my slice is and think, okay, if I rotate it, I'm gonna get a cylinder or I'm going to get a washer. Yeah? When we rotate around axes that are not the x or y axis. That's when, yep. R of x will always be x or y, okay? Because if you rotate about the x-axis, it'll be y, unless your axis of rotation shifts. And we'll do more complicated examples like that tomorrow. Yep, cool, okay. So one more and then we'll go. Suppose you have the region bounded by y is negative x squared plus six x minus eight. Which method is preferable when you rotate around the following axes? Okay, so that's negative x squared minus 6x minus 8. What number do you add to complete the square? 9. And you've actually taken away 9, so you add 9 out there, right? This is the most useful thing about completing the squares, making it so you can graph parabolas easily. So do you buy x minus 3 squared plus 1? Okay. So that's a parabola that's been shifted over how much? 3 and up 1. Upside down. Crosses the x-axis at 2 and 4. So this curve, this won't take long. Okay. And we're looking at this region right there being spun around the y-axis. So is it easier to slice up and down or side to side? Yeah. Up and down. Yeah, so in this case, the shell method is better. So the volume is 2 pi integral a to b, radius, height, thickness. So what's the A? Two to, four. Hmm? Two to four, great. How far away from the axis of rotation is your slice? X, and then how tall is your slice? Negative X squared plus six X minus eight. I think you could get it from there, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, now one more. What about the X axis? Do you want to slice the way we did or the other way? Do you want to slice like that or do you want to slice like that? I think somebody said it. It's going to be better as a disc, right? Yeah. Using your, and then your slices, instead of being cylinders, when you spin about this axis, they're circles again, right? So then the volume is pi, still 2 to 4. What's the radius? The whole, whole great thing. Yep. And it's some kind of a beast to square. Okay. So we'll do more. Things tend to disappear. If you have a curve y equals f of x and you rotate around the y axis. I'm going to use really good grammar here. How find volume using shells. So here's your picture. You have your curve. Okay. So what was the, um, what was the general way to think about this? You have your circumference, right? You have your height of your shell, right? And you have a thicket. Does that make sense? Okay. So that class is obviously way more fun than I am. So because you're talking about the circumference of a random slice, what's the circumference of a circle? 2 pi r's. 
So in this case, it's 2 pi x. Let's just call it r of x for now because we're going to deal with some r's that are a little bit different, but in this case, it is x. Um, a to b, what is the height in this particular example? f of x, and the thickness is dx. So in this example, we have 2 pi integral a to b r of x. Oh, shoot, sorry. I meant to say x. Yeah, does that. It defaults to that. And then I forget every time. <laughs> and of course, now if you have two curves, this f of x is no longer just f of x, right? It's like top curve minus bottom curve. Does that make sense? And we'll deal with some things today where the radius is not the x or y axis, and so we'll have stuff that's off. Okay, and then if you do the disk method, I, I, I don't know what I just spelled there. Disk method. You slice how relative to axis of rotation. Mm -hmm. Sideways. Sideways perpendicular. If you do the shell method, you slice how relative to your axis of rotation. Parallel. Okay. So... Now, what's going to happen if instead you rotate a region about the x-axis? First, we did the y-axis, right? So suppose I have, I don't know, that kind of curve. That's probably a bad example. Erase that curve. Only when something isn't exactly a function of x. Yes, it's much better if it isn't a function of x. <laughs> Like that. There we go. Okay. That curve. I'm going to take it off. There we go. And we want to spin that between some different values about the x axis. So that having the most helpful thing to think about is that you slice parallel to your axis of rotation. So your slices go sideways like this. So we have that 2 pi. Now in this case, our radius is going to be a function of y instead of a function of x. And your height will also be a function of y. And those values are going to be y values. And when you work with x's, you have to have it as y equals function of x, right? When you work with y's, you have to have it the other way, x equals f of y, right? So solve this for x. x equals f of y. And that will become 2 pi integral c to d y f of y dy. Wouldn't it be C plus Y? Nope. If, how far is it from there to there? That's just Y. It'd be C plus Y if you were rotating around something like down there. Then the distance from, like if so that was down C units, then the distance from here to here is C, here to here is Y. That's when it'd be C plus Y. I should actually have used different C's, so I'll call that C1. So in example four, we're going to find a volume using cylindrical shells, and technically speaking, the one we're going to do would actually be easier with the disk method, so we can actually verify that they're the same thing. Okay, so we're going to rotate y equals root x from zero to one about the x-axis, and we're going to use shells, but we can compare it using disks. So y equals root x goes through zero, zero, one, one looks like this ish, right? It's all right. That's I'm not going to judge your art. Okay. So and we're going to spin that about the x axis. And if we're using shells, we have to slice parallel to the axis of rotation 
So that's what your slices are going to look like. Does everyone understand the whole general concept? Okay, where do your slices start? Where do they end? What are the y values at those places? Zero. Mm -hmm. They happen to be the same as the x values, right? But that's not always true, so be careful of that. How far is it to your axis? Like, how far is it to a general random slice? It's just, yeah, just y. Just how far up is y. And then the height of a slice. So how tall is it? That's a little bit tricky. So if you solve this for x, you end up with x equals y squared, right? Does that measure the distance we want? It measures, it measures this distance, doesn't it? So how do you get the distance that we want? One minus that, yep. One minus y squared. And that's tricky. But once you get it set up, the rest of it's not so hard, right? It's just easy antiderivatives. So 2 pi integral 0 to 1 y minus y cubed, right? So that's 2 pi times 1 half y squared minus 1 quarter y to the fourth. So that's 2 pi times a half minus a quarter. If I ha you have half a dollar and take away a quarter, how much do you have left? A quarter dollar times the 2 pi gives us half pi, pi over 2. <clears throat> so that's the shell's way. Just for kicks. Is everyone okay with how shells was set up? The trickiest thing was what the height was. If you do disks, your volume is pi r squared dx, right? Mm -hmm. In that case, I'll just draw in a different color, you're slicing this way, right? And there's no holes, right? So what are the bounds if you were doing the disk method? Mm -hmm. Those are the x values again. OK, what is your radius? really easy. Right, square, root of x. square root of x, yep. So you end up having to integrate pi integral 0 to 1 of x dx. You're like, holy crap, that's so much easier, right? Yeah. In and, and in some cases, exactly. That's the point. So pi over 2x squared from 0 to 1, do you get the same answer? Okay. I'll tell you a hint. On your take-home quiz, I believe there are a bunch of problems to say set these up using both methods, right? Am I right about that? Yeah. Okay. Um, how I checked my answers on those is I went to Wolfram Alpha after I'd set them up, and I put in the one I had for the disk method, got the answer, put in the one I had for the shell method, got the answer, and if they were the same, I was pretty sure both setups were correct. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so you can check and see if like, your disk and shell method things are set up correctly, and if they disagree, then you'll have to you know, figure out which one's wrong. So that's a way to check if they're right. Are they all the same thing? If you are finding the volume of the same solid using a different method, they should always be the same volume. Do you see what I'm saying? If they are, the, they are the same region that's rotated around the same axis. It creates the same thing when you rotate it. That's why these two are the same answer. Are we just found them using two different methods. Are they exactly the same? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, you took the same region, you found its volume. You just chose to approximate it using either cylinders or disks. Okay. And because of the fact that you integrate and you take the number of pieces to infinity, that means that they are the same exactly. Had you been forced to approximate them using the different methods, then the rate at which they go to the right thing might be different for different methods. Is that what you're kind of asking? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I know I didn't, yep, but I wanted to point out that they're the same thing, and in this case, disk is better. Yep. yep. Okay. Did you have another question, or are we good? Um, I kind of 
kind of sold my question, but I was going to ask, like, how were they in the same? Then I realized we were rotating around the same axis. Yeah, we're rotating the same region around the same axis. We just end up doing it two different ways. Yeah. So on the test, would you want us to do, like, would you say preferred? Uh, like on your test, I will either say do both, or you can pick. And on some questions, using one method is either going to suck or be really hard or impossible, and you've got to pick which one works. Okay. Does that make sense? Like, as in there's a sort of a choice thing that's going on. Can you tell us what to do? Nope, nope, you have to think. You have to think. Okay. That's why I'm on the quiz, I think it was good to force you to do one question both ways. You're comfortable with both of them. You're not allowed to ignore one. You have to do them both. Okay. X plus y equals 4, and x equals y squared minus 4y plus 4. So to graph these, the first one is y equals 4 <coughs> minus x, right? That's easy. The second one's actually also easy. It's x equals the quantity y minus 2 squared. That was a bit special that that worked out that way, but if you tried to like complete the square on that, you're going to get that it ends up being y minus 2 squared. Because the square has already been completed. Like, it's a, just a perfect square one. But how can we solve for y on the one x on the other? Um, because when I graph lines, I have a really hard time doing slope and intercept anyway, but the way that I learned. Does that make sense? I'm eventually going to have to go back to, you know, x equals 4 minus y. But for now, just to graph it, I need to go into the slope intercept form. So let's graph the first one in purple. It's the best color. Starts at 4. Slope is? Mm -hmm. So down 1 over 1. Where does it cross the um, x-axis? 4. Ugh, I hate it when I don't put grids. Makes me crazy. OK. y minus 2 squared. We'll so that. Just, uh, x equals y squared shift to the right two? Yeah, so we'll think about it. Plug in a specific value for y that will make your x zero. Two. Two. So if you put in you put in two for y, is it clear that x is zero? Did you buy that? So we are on the y axis right here. So when you add numbers inside of regular parabolas, it shifts them left and right, correct? Mm -hmm. When you add numbers inside sideways parabolas that kind of switches and actually shifts them up and down. But you could also verify by, by plugging in different y's. If you plug in, say, like y equals 1, what do you get for x? 1. If you plug in y equals negative 1, what do you get? Or what am I saying? Okay. What if you plug in y equals 3 right there? What do you get up for x? 1. 1. And if you plug in, I don't know, y equals 0, that's a nice one to plug in, right? You get x equals squared, which is 4. So there's your parabola. It does. It, it was kind of doctored to work out nice. Really? I thought you were just really, really lucky when you made these problems. I took them out of the textbook because somebody obviously engineered them to work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to engineer them anymore. Okay, so you're going to spin about the x-axis. So ask yourself, do you want to slice like this? Or do you want to slice like that? Do you see why slicing like this is kind of a problem? Because you have part of it that's parabola and parabola, and part of it's that parabola and line. Versus this way, it's always the case that the purple curve is above the blue curve. That's why slicing horizontally is a good idea. And that would be the kind of thing you have to recognize on your test. I, mean, I did tell you to use shells, so. Okay. So the volume is 2 pi in a girl. C to D, R of Y, H of Y, D, Y. So those C and D values are Y values. So what's the lowest Y value down there? Mm -hmm. What's the highest Y value? Three. Radius, how far is it from the axis of rotation to said random slice? It's one. Y. And then the height. Is that the distance 
in the cubes. Mm -hmm. Yep, so you do top minus bottom, but you got to turn your head sideways. And who's the top curve of your head is sideways? The linear one. Mm -hmm, the linear one. So that one is going to be is 4 minus y. And then take away y squared minus 4y plus 4. Careful with them parentheses, right? When you don't have them, you miss, you miss the negative distribution. Do the 4s cancel? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We end up with, I think, 3y minus y squared. Do you guys agree with that? Or once distributing the y, we have integral 0 to 3, 3y squared minus y cubed. That's my notes say, too, so I think we're probably good. So 2 pi, it's kind of nice. What's the antiderivative of 3y squared? y cubed minus 1 quarter y to the quarter. y to the quarter. y to the quarter. Oh, y to the fourth. Sorry, that's not quarter. 2 pi times 3 cubed is uh, 27 minus 81 fourths. Oh, my gosh, common denominators. Okay, we're going to skip the rest of the algebra because, you know, that's so fifth grade. You get 27 over 2 pi. That's great. Isn't that when you learn fractions? Oh, I thought you were talking about the algebra. Like, what education system do you think we can do? Okay, you all right with that? All right, so a lot of you have had good questions, like, when is this radius not going to be y or not going to be x? That's what the next examples are going to all have. They're going to all have shifted radii. Okay. So rotate the region bounded by y equals root x, x equals 2y, about the line x equals 5. All right, first thing, sketch your cartoon, your picture of the curves. This is the same thing as y equals 1 half x, right? Okay. So what does root x go through what points? 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, and 2, okay. One half x? It's 0, 0, and 4, 2. Uh-huh, and 2, 1 as well, right? Over 2, up 1. Over. Wait, 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 wait. Over two, up one. Over one. Rise one, run two. Sorry, I just had an out for one moment there. That's your picture, right? Where is the line x equals five relative to these? Pass over it. Mm -hmm. And it's a vertical line, correct? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we continue drawing our curves until it reaches there? Nope, nope, because you always look at the region between the curves. So bounded by okay. means between the curves. Okay. And I think in this one, technically, either method is going to work, as in you can do it both ways. But let's just use the shell method for practice. So, hmm? I can show you how, uh, is the question, how do you know it's going to work both ways? When the curve doesn't do any doubling back on itself, that's a good hint. You see how the previous one had some doubling back on itself? Yep. Okay, so if we do shells, we have... Which way do our slices go, up and down or side to side? Up and down. Up and down. Okay. Parallel to the axis of rotation. So the volume is 2 pi integral... And now since your slices are up and down, you have a dx on the end there someplace. So it tells you you're going to use x's throughout your equation. So where's the x that the slices start? Where's the x that the slices end? 0 to 4. Great. All right. Now the radius is the tricky part. How far from axis of rotation out to curve? Is it just x this time? No. no curve this distance is x, right? The total distance is 
5. So it's 5 minus x. Okay, that's much like what we did before, isn't it? Okay. And then the height of the curve. Top minus bottom, so it's root x minus uh -huh, minus x over 2. So there's the setup for shell. And from there you have to expand. It's not so bad, right? You end up with 5 times root x, which is 5x to the 1 half, minus 5 over 2x. That's sending the 5 to both things. What's x times root x as x to a singular power? x to the 3 over 2. x to 3 over 2. And your last term is positive or negative? Positive. Positive. X to the 2. I think positive half x squared. Right? I said x squared over 2. Oh, you said x squared over 2. Yeah, I heard, I heard square root of x somehow, but that's just, that must be my headband. Okay. Now can we, that must look really funny. Now, can we anti-differentiate? Can I have a headband like that? You have a headband like this? Can I have one like that? Mm -hmm. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the antiderivative of x to the 1 half? x to the 3 halves, and that would be a 2 thirds times that 5 makes? 10 thirds. 10 thirds. Okay, x to the second, there would be a 1 half, making that? Five fourths. This would be five halves, coefficient two fifths, and x to the third. So the one third times the one half makes six. one sixth. On your take home quizzes, you do have to show your arithmetic. Okay, you can't just go straight to the answer. I don't believe you can add those fractions in your head. I'm sorry. On web assigned stuff, I care a lot less, okay? Like, because it's just, can you get the setup is mostly the important part. Okay, two pi times. All right. What is four to the three halves? So you root four and then you cube it. So four squared is two, four squared rooted is two, two cubed is eight. Minus five quarters times 16, right? Minus two fifths times. What's that going to be? Are you going to root it? Mm -hmm. Fifth it? Yeah. 32. And then plus, ooh, what's four cubed? 64. Yep. Plugging in zero does just give a zero, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I should have memorized that one. Like a lot more ones. The cubes, you mean? Yeah. So you have 80 thirds. If you can reduce your fractions, it's probably far, far easier to do so. So 5 fourths times 16, that ends up being 20. Do you guys know that you can do the division before the multiplication? Like your PEMDAS teachers lied. If you're careful about it, you can do 16 divided by 4 and then multiply by 5, can't you? That's because you can change the order in which you multiply. And dividing by 4 is like multiplying by a quarter. This one you can't fix. It's still 64 over 5. And then can you fix 64 over 6 a little bit? Mm-hmm. 32 over 3? Mm-hmm. Well, at least two of the things are already in terms of threes. <laughs> yeah, they are. Two of the things are in terms of threes. So there, how many thirds do we have? We have uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 112. Is that right? Yes. Okay, minus 20, minus 64. Because I regret saying I do the arithmetic. I don't want to do it anymore. This is where I break out Johnny T.I. T. 89. 5 over 5, 3 over 3, 15 over 15. And yes, from there you can calculator it. And I'm just going to be lazy now. 136 pi over 15. I get that you can do it now. On the test, would you give us one that has that much... Uh, no, 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 no. On the test, I have to do the test questions, too, is as you observe, I suck at arithmetic. So, like, this is just not my thing. <laughs> I failed. Those multiplication times tests you do in school, like, I failed them multiple times. So, like, if I can't do it fast, you can't do it fast. So the arithmetic will not be ridiculous. There'll be some, but it won't be ridiculous. 
So, okay. That's not quite ridiculous yet. Though. It's pretty, I don't know, 112 times 5, when the point is can you do calculus, <laughs> not can you do multiplication, then it's a totally okay, the wrong I, thing. That, that is pretty bad. Okay, just, just for kicks, okay? Let's do this, let's set it up using the other method. I don't know if the room must. Then just, just watch, or write it in the next problem or something like that, okay? Write it in the margin. We're just going to set it up. So what if we sliced this way? So it'd be pi, integral, what are the values we use now for the bounds? Zero to two because they're y's. And you're going to have a dy out there because you're to have a change in y. What's your r out? How far is it from the axis of rotation to the outer curve? Well, the outer curve is x equals y squared, right? Mm -hmm. R out is 5 minus y squared. So we have 5 minus y squared squared minus mm -hmm. And if you were to do all of that expanding and all of that arithmetic, you're going to get the exact same answer. And it's going to be even worse than that. It possibly. I mean, it just depends. You're going to actually end up integrating things that have whole number powers, which is a little bit nicer than fractional powers, right? Yeah. So, that's like, but, that's much easier. but that's, and it is not always the case. I think in this one, it actually is easier. Yes. Yep. I don't know Wolf or Malfo is kind of hit or miss with the, uh, with the unsimplified problems like that. Sometimes it can No, no, easy. they're good as long as you put your parentheses in the right place. Hmm. Wolfram Alpha is totally fine unless you misplace parentheses, in which case it will give you something that probably could be wrong because input or error. Maybe I'm thinking of symbol. Uh... Maybe, that's possible. Okay, how about this one? So x equals 2y squared, y squared plus 1, about the line y equals negative 2. Okay, so, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Picture sketch. Are you going to give us graphics? Oh gosh, yeah, I don't know why I didn't do that here. There was something wrong with me. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mostly because I want to make sure your points are in the right places, and it's easiest to do that when I make you like draw on a grid. <laughs> okay, this first one, when y is zero, x is? One. No, oh, the first one, the x equals 2y squared, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Zero. When y is either positive one or negative one, what's the x? Two. two. So over 2 up 1, over 2 down 1. Okay, and then when you plug in 2 for y, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I think you get 8 out for the x's. Do you agree? Okay. So it's a skinnier parabola. This parabola went on a diet. Oh, it was a funny joke. You guys should laugh at it. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, okay, we shouldn't, let's not talk about that. Okay, the next one, if you take a, well, if you plug in zero, you get out y equals, if you plug in y equals zero, you get out x equals one. If you plug in x, y equals one, you get two for the x. So look at your intersection point store right there. Looks a bit like a, like the logo from Starship, the, the, what's that? Star, Star Trek, Trek that, that, that one. Okay, about the line y equals negative 2. I bet they designed the logo in their calculus classes. That's totally it. Okay. How the guy who makes Star Trek build calculus? So, think about this. Do you want to slice like this, or do you want to slice like that? Can you see why the vertical slices are going to have problems? Yeah. You're going mean, to cross yourself, and then you have like part that has no hole and part that has a hole? That's really going to suck. So we're not going to set this one up the other way. We're just going to use shells only. Have you guys seen this goofy thing called Marcel the shell? Okay, if you have, if you haven't, Google it. If you have, I want to do this whole lesson in a Marcel the shell voice. It'd be so distracting. Okay. So the volume is, are we going to use X's or Y's in this? Y's. Y's. So C, D... Radius, height, dy. Okay. So you can't. No, you can't. 
because we're not slicing the evil way. Yeah, it, it's, it, th let's, let's set it up and talk about why we can't use symmetry after. So first of all, what is the, um, what is the lowest y? Mm -hmm. What is the highest y? One. One. Okay, the radius is how far is it from this to random slice? So that slice is drawn negative, which makes it appear a bit more tricky. But what if I put the slice up here? Is it more obvious than what it should be? It's 2 plus y. Does that work even for the negative numbers? If your y is like negative a half, then you do 2 plus negative 1 half, you get 1 and a half. Does that make sense? OK. And then what's the height? Who's the top curve? Purple or black? Purple. Purple. So y squared plus 1 minus the bottom curve, which is the black one, which is 2y squared. So 2 plus y times, I think this gives us 1 minus y squared when you simplify, right? So the reason we can, so is everyone okay with how I simplified that? Is that part all right? Now, you can use symmetry when the integral that you have is an even function, which means when you plug in negative the variable, you get out the exact same thing as if you plugged in the variable itself. And the thing about the um, disk method is that the formula that you use is always pi r out squared minus pi r in squared, and the, the r out and r in squared makes that part kind of always even. Look at this thing. Is this function inside the integral an even function? So that's why you can't use symmetry here. So with the, with the shell method, be careful about that. That's a great point because students have made that mistake before. Yeah, I can also picture rotating it. If you picture rotating it, you see that the, there's definitely not symmetry in the shells that you have. That's yeah. the reason it really fails as well. If you were taking this thing and spinning it about the y-axis, then there is symmetry in the shape. OK. So let's just finish this one up. That's 2 pi integral negative 1 to 1, 2 minus 2y squared plus y minus y cubed. So 2 pi times 2y minus 2 thirds y cubed plus 1 half y squared minus a quarter y to the fourth. Ugh. Arithmetic is nasty. I'm so sorry, but you've got to plug in 1, you've got to plug in negative 1, right? Let's just write down what it is. I'll tell you what the answer is then. So you've got 2 pi times 2 minus 2 thirds plus a half minus a quarter. That's plugging in 1. Minus, when you plug in negative 1 to the first term, what do you get? Negative 2. Next term you get plus two-thirds, plus a half, minus a quarter, right? That's not so bad. Some things cancel, right? Like all of it? No, not all of it. <laughs> nope, two pi. You have two and end up with plus two, like this and this, right? No, the only survivors. No, the two-thirds also survives, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, both I think the halves and the quarters die, right? Yeah. Okay, math is so violent. You end up with 16 pi over 3. I don't know why, but for some reason I've seen those two thirds canceling out. That's just because you have to be very careful about distributing a negative, right? Okay. I forgot my watch today, so I don't know what time it is. Stop me when we're like five minutes out, okay? Yeah, about 25 minutes. Okay. So, do you guys, have you heard of the formula for the volume of a cone? Uh, pi r squared times height? One third no. pi r squared height. That's the cone. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to use cylindrical shells to prove that. Okay. It's actually, it's actually not that hard. If you just know how to look at the problem, it's not so bad. So 
Here's the picture. Wait, I was thinking of a cylinder. Radius. Yes, you were. That's totally fine. Okay. Now, do you agree if I take this triangle and I spin it, or if I take this triangle and I spin it around which axis am I going to get a cone of height h radius r? The y-axis. Okay, you buy that? Okay. So what you need is you need an equation for that line. As in, this is a line. Its equation is y equals mx plus b, right? What is the y-intercept of said line? h. Okay, x plus h. What is the slope? I think slope is rise over run, right? So the slope is positive or negative? Negative. negative. You go down h and over r. Okay, so that's that equa that your equation for your curve. Your curve just happens to not be very curved. Straight. But straight lines are still curves. So we're going to slice this way, and we're going to use the shell method. Does it matter which method you use here? No, it doesn't. You could use the disk method. You just would have to solve that equation for x. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that would be totally possible. I think that the, the algebra ends up being a little bit uglier, mm -hmm. I believe. So where do your slices, so since I'm slicing this way, I have dx. So at what x do my slices begin? At what x do they end? Zero to r. Zero to r. Great. How, what's the radius of a slice? R per. No, no, I think it's, I think it's just x. Because the slices are different radii away, right? They're anywhere from zero to r. How tall are my slices? Negative h over r x plus h. Oh, wait, this clock right there. I don't know what I'm thinking. Of course, I can see that. So that's 2 pi integral 0 to r, negative h over r x squared plus h x. <coughs> Can you anti-differentiate that? <coughs> mm -hmm. What's the antiderivative of um, x squared? X cubed over three. How about h x? Mm -hmm. H x squared over two, or one half doesn't matter. Same thing. We're plugging in zero and r. Plugging in zero does give you zero, right? Okay. And now this actually is going to simplify quite well. So if you do negative h over r times r cubed over 3, what happens to at least one of the r's? Cancels. So you've got 2 pi times negative 1 third r squared h. Is that okay? Plus, the other term you have is 1 half r squared h, right? Hasn't there like terms? To combine them, what must you find? Common denominator? What's it going to be? Six. Six. Multiply this one by 2 over 2. This one by 3 over 3. And you end up with 2 pi times, the first term is going to be negative 2 r squared h over 6. The next one is... 3r squared h over 6, right? No, you have one. You'd have 1r one squared h over 6. Ta-da! Right? Yeah. You're learning why all this geometry you were taught in, like, I don't know, ninth, 10th grade is actually true. Doesn't that make you happy? I don't understand why they didn't just leave with this, though. Can you imagine like, giving a, a ninth grader this? <laughs> no way. Yeah. Some of those Aspie, like, whiz ninth graders. All right. Okay. I can't personally like 
this explanation, as I told you, so doesn't usually work. So this next one that we've got here, this is one of, I'll do, we're going to take a region and we're going to set up the integrals both ways for, for four different cases. It's going to take forever. Okay? So y equals root x and y equals 1 half x. So root x goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. Half x, 0, 0, 2, 1. 2, 4. So if we're going to spin about the x-axis, so set it up using disk, and label who's who, set it up using shell. And disk, you slice perpendicular, shell, you slice parallel. So pi integral. What are the um, bounds for the disk method for this one? Zero to four. Do you guys agree with that? Because they're the x's. Who's your outer function? Root x. So you'll have root x squared minus who's your inner function? Mm -hmm. Half x squared dx. I can't remember in the quiz if I asked you to simplify, but like you can totally do that. You can say x minus one quarter x squared, right? That's fine. Like the, the quiz we just took, or the the one the take home quiz. Okay. So does that part make sense? Yeah. Pi r out squared minus pi r in squared. Now how about shell? So first of all, is it just pi? No, it's going to be two pi. Now you slice parallels. So you're slicing that way. And. Because you're going to have dy in this case, the bounds you put there are y values. So what is the lowest y value? Up to 2. two. Okay. What is the radius? How far away from the x-axis is a slice? Y. y. And then the height of the slice is top minus bottom. Who's the top curve, purple or black? Purple. But we also have to have them as x equals, don't we? So we have x equals y squared, and then we have x equals, what's the other one? 2y. Okay, so that's going to be 2y minus y squared. And if you were to Wolfram Alpha both of those integrals, they're going to give you the same answer, because they are the volume of the same solid, just found two different ways. I suggest doing that to check your answers are correct. Wait, is it top versus minus bottom? Or? Say that again. <laughs> is it top? It's top minus bottom, yeah, because it's height. Height is how tall. So this has the bigger x minus the smaller x. Okay. Just that top minus bottom when you're sideways is rightmost minus leftmost. Just like our, our outs and our ins were when there's stuff like this, right? Okay, y axis, same region. Choot, choot, choot. Okay, so this time, y-axis. So first disk, where you slice perpendicular. Okay. So pi integral. Is it going to be dy or dx? dy. dy. In that case, the bounds are 0 to 2. Great. Does your, do your slices, the disks, do they have holes in them? When you spin this, yes. is there a hole? Yeah. yeah, there is. So who's your R out? Mm -hmm. 2 Y. So you're going to have 2 Y squared minus who's your R in? X squared. Yep. Y squared. Yes, yeah, sorry. Y squared. Yes, 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 yes. I should really, really write this down. X equals Y squared x equals 2y. Okay. All right, shell. Slice parallel. So I slice that way. 2 pi. Is it dx or dy? 
dx, okay. Who's the, what's the low, what's the bounds? Zero to four, yep. Okay. Now you need your radius, so how far away from the y-axis is your slice? It's a distance of x over. Mm -hmm. And then height, how tall is the slice? Who's the top curve now? Yep, which you, but because you're using x's, you have to say it's root x minus half x. All right, ready for the weird axes? Okay, y equals 4. I'm just wondering, is there a, a, a different method than the show method? Like, like I don't know, the, uh, the Chevron method or any of these other I've, methods? I've never used them, and we're not going to do them in this class. <laughs> Did you, did you actually Google the, something called the Chevron method, or did you just make it up? No, I just Googled a list of gas station companies. Ah, ah, I see, I see. Is there a disc <laughs> gas company? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, well, if you guys are at a gas station, and you've got the, you know, got the Shell gas station, you can call your gas station the disc gas station, okay? All right. So... <coughs> It's hilarious. You see one in the future. Like, if we do discs, <laughs> moving on to discs. All right, that means we're slicing perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So pi integral, is it going to be dx or dy? Yeah. dx. So the bounds are 0 to 4. Okay. It's one of those tricky ones. Who's the outer curve relative to that axis of rotation? The line or the curve? The line. And so how far away that is, well that's, is it 4 plus curve or 4 minus curve? 4 minus curve. So 4 minus 1 half x. And you're going to have to square that, right? Who's the inner curve? Well, the, the other one, right? So that inner radius is going to be 4 minus root x. There you go. No, God, no, 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 no. Shell. Slice parallel. Did you sense some kind of patterns going on here? As in, like, if the disc is X, the shell is Y, y right? All right, DY. So this would be 0 to 2 again. And the radius, how far from axis of rotation to my random horizontal slice? This part's y, whole thing's 4, so it's 4 minus y. Just like your other radiuses were 4 minus a curve, right? And then the height. How tall is the curve? Who's bigger, the purple or the black? The, the purple, yep. So the purple's equation is... 2y, right? And the black is y squared? Yes? Okay. Which of those two do you think is going to be easier to solve if you had to do it top or bottom? I don't know. This, you've got to expand stuff. This is just multiplying two binomials. I think the second one's going to be easier if you had to actually, like, work it out. Okay. And the last one. So same region. Oh, I know. But I think by forcing yourself to do these things two ways, you're going to be better at both methods. At least that's my theory. I'm to sticking to it. Force ourselves to draw the same graph four times in a row? No, 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 no. I have to do it four times because I only have one grid. You guys have, you can draw the graph once. Unless you need to draw it again to see. Yeah. No, unless I make a typo. <laughs> yeah, that, I don't know how that works. I don't think it does. Okay, so if we use disk. Mm -hmm, it's y again, exactly. So volume is pi, integral, 
dy, right. What be the lower bound? Zero. Zero. Upper bound is two, right? Okay. So R out. Purple is the outer curve, right? So how far is it from the axis of rotation over to the y-axis? Three. Three. Plus how much farther to purple curve? What's purple curve's equation? One half x. One half x. That'd be three plus a half x. Oh, we're doing three. Yes, yes, we're doing y's. I was just testing you. Three plus two y squared. Okay. Whew. Minus three plus, what's the other curve? Y squared. Squared. Okay. And shells. It's not that bad. So slice perpendicular. Say that again. Parallel. I said the wrong thing. Okay. So everyone's clear with the fact that it's zero to four, right? Okay. How far from axis of rotation to the slice was the radius? Four, three plus x. Great. And the height, top minus bottom. So the top curve is root x, the bottom curve is 1 half x. Whew. There's a quiz question like that, too. Yeah, like where you have a region and it says do this thing like basically eight times, right? So it's a little tedious, but I think it really forced like how are these methods different, how do I work with them? I'm pretty sure I put one on there. It's like, I, it didn't? It's just shell method. It's just shell method? Okay, well, crap. Well, I think it might be the same questions you had to do with the disk method in the previous quiz. Okay. I want to do one of the last examples because they're a little bit harder. So this example, I'd like you to just look at the notes online, and I'll tell you one hint. This one you can't do both ways, as in there's a good way to do them for both of them. And I don't want to tell you which ones, but you think about it, okay? So think about it and then figure out which one's better. If you have questions, ask me. But let's just do one of these next ones. They're going to involve the same techniques. I think example 11 is harder, so let's do that one at least just until we run out of time. So cosine of pi x over 2 y equals 0 and between x is 0 and 1. So that's going to be a cosine graph that's been kind of like mucked with, right? Is it clear that when I plug in 0, cosine is 1? When I plug 1 into this function, I get cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. Okay, so that's where x is equal to 1. It looks a little bit like this ish. With anything that's funky, if you have to use something like a graph or to graph it, it's okay. And we're going to spin this about the y axis. And we're going to use cylindrical shells. I mean, I guess you could solve for like arc cosine and do the disk method, but I don't know how to integrate arc cosine squared. Do you? Probably not, okay? So, no offense meant in that statement. <laughs> 2 pi some really complex way to do it. Okay. I think that you can probably use an integration by parts technique to make it happen, okay? But I think it's going to be tricky. All right, so what are the bounds on my integral? Zero to one, and it's a dx integral. What's the radius? X. What's the height of my curve? The cosine thing. Cosine of pi over 2x, right? Hmm. Boom, chakalaka. See this? What integration technique do you have to use? Substitution by parts. Uh, I'll just do, but yeah, you can substitute, but by parts is really the big, big idea. Why doesn't plain substitution work? If you let u equal pi over 2x, the du is pi over 2 dx, right? So you haven't you replaced. Your two pi out there. That would be fine too, like as in, would it? 
power two. It'll cancel the pi part of it. Yeah. yeah. So you can do a substitution, but you will not get away by the fact that you have to do integration by parts. Like, it is necessary. And I'm just going to skip the substitution because it's less work. Okay? So if you do integration by parts, which Jill calls IBP on her notes, what is your U going to be, and what's your DV going to be? Uh, is U cosine of pi over 2x, and DV is uh, x dx. Here's x. No, DV is cosine of pi over 2x. And u is x. You let u be the thing that you want to go away when you take derivatives. So du is then dx. And v. Okay, first of all, antiderivative of cosine is sine. Is it negative? Okay. And then how do you compensate for the pi over 2? 2 over pi. 2 over pi. Does that still cancel out? It will be the same. Don't worry. So 2 pi uv, 2 over pi x sine pi over 2x from 0 to 1, minus 2 over pi integral from 0 to 1 sine of pi over 2x dx. Is that part all right? Remember that it's u v minus integral v du, right? Okay, let's work out this part. 2 pi times 2 over pi. When you plug in 1, what sign of pi halves? 1 times 1 times 1, plugging in 0 gives a 0, so that's the first part. Okay, minus 2 over pi. Antiderivative of sine is cosine, and should it be negative? Yep, and then what else do I have to have there? Again, 2 over pi again, right? Okay, parentheses close, 0 to 1. So I have 2 pi times 2 over pi plus 4 over pi times cosine pi over 2 minus cosine of 0. Yes, it would. Sorry. Thank you. 4 over pi squared. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So cosine of pi halves is... Zero, right? Cosine of zero is one. So what I really have here is two pi, two over pi, minus four over pi squared, right? Now just distribute your two pi and cancel some stuff. You get four minus eight over pi. Do you buy that? Yeah? Okay. The next example with e to the x is also integration by parts. It's just a little bit easier because there's not like fractional coefficients and weird over pi running around. Okay?